your controls real quick? Yep. I have controls. You got a control? I have controls. Okay, at this point, that's kind of ironic because I was, was actually kind of switching just my glasses the because from you. it was getting a little bit late. Right. Because what I want and you to do is I want you to look at your map and I want you to find Suffolk and, and then the tell flight me instructor just how we this would out on me. set up to enter into Suffolk. I was not expecting this at all. Okay, so Suffolk. So he did say we were gonna go to another and, uh, airport. Runways and land there huh? and talk um, about another traffic pattern. We do have a right pattern, but when you're navigating in the air, it is okay. completely different than navigating on the ground. Everything looks different. Uh, on, on those, I don't know my here. left from my right, what's so east, up. what's west, All what's right, so north, how do we figure what's out which south. We want to use? It's Based something that weather, I'm gonna have to get used winds. to. It's right now, winds. the winds are, and then he's hitting me with all these questions that. At the zero, moment, zero, zero. So I don't know at, because uh, we didn't plan ahead of time. Right, so so that's all for the we meter, just finished right? some maneuvers, uh, and now we go straight meter? into yeah. how, old is that meter? how do we get the suffer? Twenty-seven minutes ago. All right, I so don't how do know. We get the most up to date I weather? have no idea about so how to get to here, this location. Uh, I don't know how far it is. I know if we were in a car. It would seem like it's a little further than what it probably really is in the air. How do you switch? But that's all I know. All right, so let's figure out what the frequency is. So one of the things frequency that when I'm looking there, at, um, or actually when I was training the book work, all, right, their, all the material was saying that you would pre-plan okay. your flight. So you would write out on a sheet of paper, right? I'm right, taking so off from this airport, and I'm right, going to this airport. Frequency. So I'm taking off, you get your top of climb, and then you go and get your... Right. gas, how much and gas you're going to be using, and then you uh, write in your waypoints. So I know when I take five. off, head into this heading, and I turn to that heading, and then I look see for my waypoints. Do I see my waypoint? Yes, I see my waypoint. Do you see your next waypoint? Do you see your waypoint? Yes, I see my waypoint. So now I know that I'm still on track to get to my next airport. That's how I was used to doing it or seeing it. This is actually the first time that we went to another airport. We always went to the practice field. And then we you know, did our little thing at the practice field. And then we would come back. So I knew how to get to the practice field. And I knew how to get back to our airport. But we didn't plan this. So this was like right from the air. How do you get there? All right. Now, I don't what know. What is their CTAP frequency? But I think it was a good learning experience because it really put oh, me one, on the spot. Two, two point seven. And I had right, to gather so that information really one, quickly. Do the crazy thing is, one, two, all the local seven, airports, one, airports eight, I have saved in four flights and now we're on under my favorite airport. So I was able to go in there, but so I've seen all that information before. Yep. Switch it. Yep, so the one in fourth flight, blue, but when I was put that's on the, the spot, my brain kind of went blank. Right up top, that's I'm that's looking active. at stuff that gotcha. I know what All this right. is, but you'll hear me stuttering and scrambling right, trying so to figure out do you have the what it is. Sight? It was a lot of information uh -huh. coming at me at one I'm time. Turn a little bit. So he's asking me, do you have the airport in sight? I, have in sight. I don't. I don't know uh, what I'm looking at from up there. I know when I'm looking okay. for my airport, uh, can you find the Hampton landmarks Rose? at my airport are three or four radio towers that I'm looking for. Couldn't see those radio towers Hampton either. Rose. I don't know what direction we were turned in. So my landmarks that I'm used to using... I couldn't see them anymore, so I had no sense of direction up there, and that's kind of a scary thing. I'm glad that I had him sitting next to me because he clearly knows the area. I don't know the area, so feeling lost in the air is not a very good feeling. The white buildings, there's a lot of white buildings. No, easier than that, I would say. The river? Yeah. Uh, the giant bodies of water around here, so... Uh, there are a lot of bodies of water. So what do you see, and, and what are they? There's a huge one over there. What is that? 
Oh, that's, no. that, that's not a river, right? No, is that the Dismal Swamp? What is that? That's Lake Drummond. That's Lake Drummond, right? All right, yep. where's Hampton Roads in relation to Lake Drummond? So, with Lake Drummond, I'm used to Hampton Lake Drummond Road being on the other side. The I've never experienced Lake Drummond from that bad. side, ever. Hampton Roads is so, southern. I'm like, okay, Lake it's Drummond is here, so and then I look at the map in Floor, in floor right. Hold on, where and I'm like, you know, okay, Lake Drummond is here, uh, turned around while you're but it now, should be over I here. Yeah, so Since the direction is off, right there. way off. And okay. then I'm comparing right where Lake Drummond is to where the airport is. Right there. Yeah, and there I'm like, go. well, this doesn't there's match up to where I am I in the air. So once I was able to see my towers, right. then so I knew where exactly is where Suffolk I was. In relation to Suffolk Hampton should Roads. be behind us. I didn't okay. realize the Suffolk Airport was that close. Which side, left or right? I but mean, we're talking about five way. minutes from uh, Hampton Roads Executive Airport. Is Suffolk Airport, and then Chesapeake Airport if we were to, we could turn is to a the, little bit further than that. Right, either one. I mean, the closeness um, by air is right, crazy. So is gonna be to Driving the to these places, Roads, right? it Southwest. would take much There's longer, Hampton probably Roads. 20, yep. 30 minutes That's south. That's to get to so, either one of those airports. Where's Suffolk? Suffolk is... Yeah, I'm really scrambling really scrambling but i look forward to doing an exercise like this again because i really want to know how to land. navigate in my Could area and really that right there? Oh, right there. know what i'm looking yeah. at from I'm the looking air a lot further in off. reference to it's a lot further away. what i'm That's seeing really close. you know yeah, as far as reference points on the ground because we haven't done our checklist we haven't made any radio calls so we're not ready to descend another just kind of like trial so by try fire just Gosh, put you out there really and say close. go for yeah, it Suffolk is our closest airport from Hampton Roads he's doing all the flying being a close second. he's just so calm so doing all the flying and chilling with it yeah. right. okay, that is, my mind right now is exploding with information yeah, not, not very far trying to figure out how do I do I this yeah. what am I going to do alright so we found Suffolk so now that we found it Have with any our of you had experiences let's, let's like this when you were working on your it, private pilot's uh, license? Using our GPS. So, we can use our GPS to find airports. So what it's an interesting training identifier? tool. Very different. I was expecting SFQ. that when SFQ. we did navigation, right, yeah. right, so what we're that we were going to plant it on the ground we're gonna hit this button, and then go there. do it in the air. So, so, what that means is direct to. So we need to go to this button. airport. Okay, we're going to head 280. So, if my, so if my we'll taking K, off at zero 02, so okay, S we take off at zero 02. Once we get to a certain S altitude, turn to 280, start heading towards that airport, look for different landmarks. And then we talk about getting into the traffic pattern then. Two. Okay. There you go. This right. was a lot different what than what I thought enter. it was going to be. And then it's going to ask us if we want to activate it. So we're going to do enter again. Boom. And then that's going to give us so a nice at the same time, line. I'm learning so how to use the airplane GPS. And this was actually okay. the first it's time also give us a distance, that I was so using the airplane GPS. So three and a half miles away. So we are pretty I close saw them use it. I knew how to switch between the... All the right. CTAF so or now, the AWOS and listen to we the weather report in, uh, we and I knew how to switch runways. back and forth between uh, making a call have, and all of that but I didn't know how to so switch to let's out how we're the GPS land and there. actually change to a different so airport or use, change frequency and how are we going to set up for it you can't use 25 right right because they have um Yep, so let's not use 25. Let's use uh, their main runway. Now, this is uh, so my 10th flight. Or zero four. Let's stick with those two. However, two or zero four 10 flights, so but hour wise, on zero four. this flight okay. would have made 12.8 hours. On two two as well. Hold on. Uh, um, you might want to double check that. Yeah, I'm looking at that again. I see right traffic on. Um, zero four, left and as you can see, my head is buried in my iPad looking at four flight. Uh, yep. That's so another bad traffic. habit that I have, is having my head down, buried, yep. okay. looking for information, right when I should really be looking out the window, having some idea. All maybe right, so it's me, bomb, maybe I'm right? old school, right. what were the winds at but I prefer what, what was the winds a paper more chart more to tell me that information yeah, and what write it down. So it's, it's probably safe to assume that I just feel two, more comfortable two might be a little bit of a better bet. So we can use runway 2-2. 
So even looking so, at the, um, our current position from the airport, checklist for the airplane, how are we gonna set I find myself burying my face so in the two. iPad. So when we do um, engine failures, you know, I'll pick my spot to land uh, and then I'll start going so through the we checklist. Two, two, and before I know it, I'm airport. really low uh -huh. and I have to do a uh, go around and I wind up missing the landing for that field heading, because I'm I so guess. busy with my head down in the checklist. Two. Uh, no, so, so if we were flying a heading of 2 2, that's uh, one thing that we I have would to be break. basically paralleling the runway but not getting any closer to the airport. First, so what did I say? Aviate, navigate, two communicate. Two. Uh, no, I need to so do more first, aviating. We need to enter the pattern, right? Right, but I'm talking about getting back to the airport. Uh, yeah. So if we were to, so if we were to turn 2 2 right now, like I said, we would be flying parallel with the runway, but we would still be all the way out here, right? Right. We'd still be four and a half miles away from the airport. But we can't enter their traffic pattern until, until we know what the heck we're going to do. So we got to figure that out, and then we got to make so a radio I've call letting them been know what we're going to do, this and airport, then we can do so it. So I don't know gotcha. what's going on with this airport. We also have two checklists airport. we still got to go through, right? I don't know any right. ground so references for this airport. We still got a lot we can airport. do before we actually go land. Okay. Just looking at four flight, I know what so airport then, numbers the they are, what direction is... their runways are, descend. but that's it. Well, we don't need to descend down to the traffic pattern. Correct. Let's figure out what we're going to do first before we. So my thought down is, well, if we're going before on runway two two, pattern, we just fly a um, heading of two two. We'll see the runway right there. So I guess we'll yes, we will parallel the runway. All we got to do All is right. start. Flying towards the runway, so from right? Position right now, does it and make then sense for us work to our way into the traffic pattern. That's what I'm thinking. The field? But no, that's not it because of the way their traffic pattern works. So, I don't know so I'm which like, one okay, it's good learning experience. Two, two. To know if we need to overfly All right. the field or not. I can help you out with that. Just one second. So we're going to parallel 2-2. Right, right now our heading is 2-2. Two, two. Okay. So we should be paralleling one of their runways. Right, so we should be paralleling 2-2. Two, two. We are paralleling 2-2, two, two, correct. So if we're paralleling 2-2, two, two, we can go on to a 45 to 2-2. Two, two. We don't have to overfly the field because it, the field is on this side. All right, so remember, if we want to land 2-2, two, 2-2 two, two, two would be our heading when we're on final, right? Right. All right, so if we entered on a 45 right now, and then made a base turn, and then a final turn, we would actually be heading this way, right? Which is 0-4. Zero 0-4, four. Zero correct. Four. Right. Okay. So if we want to set up on a 45 for 2-2, two, two, we do need to overfly, we the, do field, need to overfly the field. We overfly the And then okay. we'll do a descending right-hand turn, which will put us on the left traffic for 2-2. Two, two. So one of the things that right. I'm going to ask the instructors the next time I go up and fly is, do you always right. okay. have to get in the pattern? So we're going right. to be on so the other side know of the field. So if we know we're landing on 2-2, two, uh -huh. two, okay. like why I'll can't we just on. land straight in I'm gonna actually instead start of going down now that we figured that out. to the 45, right. so we'll uh, then we're, going to downwind base in that final, why get in the uh, pattern? Well, let's lose if we're right first. there, and why not just that, go straight in instead of getting in the pattern? And, and is there a call that we can make done. to just land straight in? I don't know. If you know the answer to that, okay, so put it in the comments. Want to pitch in the mixture. All right, so I'm going to leave the mixture lean. Car peat as required. All right. Don't Especially car if on there's really no other traffic in the area. I get being in a pattern for traffic reasons. But if there altimeter. are no other planes in the traffic pattern right, or in so the area, our altimeter, we why not the just already, right? yeah. land directly on, a, on, a, uh, on the uh, runway? It seems to make a little bit more sense to me, a lot less work. All right, so in order pretty to much you're just gliding I'm down. Level off here for a second. I but still have a lot to learn. A little bit. Now we can reset it if we need to. It looks still pretty close, it west does. and west. But I'll All get right. there. Yep. We'll keep that shit coming then. All right, and that was descent. So, pre landing. Haven't got to that yet. All right, let's go ahead and run through pre landing as well. Run through it? Yep. Okay. Um, 
brakes and pedal test. Don't have pedal brakes. Nope. Uh, landing lights are on. All right. All our lights are on. All the lights are on. Seat belts and harnesses. Mixture. We're going to keep mixture right where it is. Carpet as required, which we don't need right now. I'm going to cut the fuel pump on. Okay. Fuel pump is on. Uh, fuel on a proper tank. We're still good to go on this tank right here. So it's getting really late at this point. Um, the cameras are doing a pretty good job uh, with picking up the light. But it's starting to get dark. What we do need to do is go ahead and get a radio call done. So I'm going to say that this plane does not have any backlights on the instrument panel at all. Unless you want to make that call. Uh, so, stop of traffic. Yep. Uh, overfly at 2,000 for a teardrop. Man, horrible at radio yep, calls. Two miles, two, when it comes for me making a radio west. call, okay. my mind just turns to mush. Stop of traffic, 93 Juliet. Uh, gonna teardrop on to 2 2. We're two miles to the west for left traffic. Alright, so remember it's who you are, where you are, and then what you want. So we're two miles who to you the west. Are, where you are, and what you want. Drop onto the 45 I gotta remember two. that. I gotta commit right. that to memory. Right. You are where you are. That's what you want. Yep, so all okay. the radio calls are gonna follow that same standard format. I gotta get better at radio calls. It is a travesty. All right, now do you remember how, how we turn on our calls. pilot controlled lighting? On our who? Our pilot controlled lighting. How do we turn on the lights down oh, here? It looks five, a little dark. Now this I thought uh, was uh, just quick. really cool. Yeah, so we have to be tuned into their seat down frequency, I read right? about it in the book. Which books. we are. So let's go ahead and click We've our radio button five times. We've actually hitting that radio button five oh, times. And then seeing the lights come on on the airport. Oh, look at that. I thought that was really cool. Great experience Just like that, overall. we got some lights. Do have lights. Right, Most so of my flights, flight actually just about all of my flights, four, I've seen over here. So have been on our early so morning, no orientation of the runway, correct? mid afternoon. So that's, that's one this down. one was pretty much a late evening flight. So, so we definitely Julia. needed so those lights. I had one other flight at a different school when I was trying out the different Seven. schools in the area. That was right, an so evening flight as well. And by the time we got back to the airport, it was completely dark. And then we're going to do a descending right hand turn. That shall put us on a left downwind for 2 2. A lot of the times that I fly with this instructor, we wind up overflying right. the field. The other instructor that right. I fly what with, our pattern we never be here? overflew the field. Not once. So it's uh, interesting to see how the two different instructors two. approach things. So I like being able to you know cycle between the two to get information from both of them because they have two different approaches and i'm gaining from both their knowledge so i enjoy that Overall, this experience was great. Um, going into a new airport, it's not quite a cross country. Right, the well, airport well, was only five minutes away, on so it can't be considered a cross country. Yep. But traffic, being able US, to go into a new runway, airport two, two, for a landing, it felt like I was actually doing something. You know, when you do more than just the maneuvers, because I imagine once right. I get my you pilot certificate that I would be going from all airport right, so to airport to and not just flying ready. maneuvers all over the place. All right. so going from all point right, A to control. point B. Right, you have controls. So have going control. from point Here's A to point B here made me feel like all I was right. piloting. So we want to be close enough to where my wing is off the, uh, yep. off the so runway. I, I'd go ahead and start your downwind turn. More landing practice which I can never get enough of that. I think I just need to spend a right, day in the pattern doing landings. Making the calls, the same time. 
setting up, landing. I just need to get much better at it. I'm somewhat comfortable a little bit. I prefer to come in a little bit hotter. Uh, traffic. The other uh, instructor Juliet, comes in a little bit hotter than he does. Two, two. Um, talking Stop with him, traffic. he keeps right. 75 uh, just about the whole way coming in. This instructor here, he'll go down to about 65. Um, but that extra, you know, 10 miles per hour makes a huge difference. For me, that 75 feels like or 70 ish feels like I'm flying my RC airplane in FPV and landing it, right where I'm coming in a lot faster, well, we need to... not so slow and lumbering. Just a little bit longer. Okay. All right, let's say go ahead and start your pace. But this now. instructor does everything by the numbers for the most part. So, you know, the sheet says we come in at this rate, and that's exactly how I'm learning it with him. So I'm not mad at that. I can put in my next level of flaps. Yep. And you can make a base call. These calls. Stop the traffic, 9 3 calls. Juliet, base for 2 2. All right. They get on my nerves. And then I'm sometimes when I'm listening to other people so make 75 calls, on base. 75 on base. I have okay. no clue right, as to what they're saying sometimes. People get into this monotone voice when they start making calls. It's like. Yo, that's not your regular voice. Right, you're just you're, you're doing this call thing, and it I can't understand what you're saying. There's really little inflection in your voice. I can probably start turning the final. It's got to yep. be a pilot thing. Is it for time? What is it for? Can we make traffic turning final normal calls with normal voices? Touch and go landing. All right, so I'm seeing so all it. four red, so let's add a little bit of power in there. I don't want to get too low. So in this particular landing, Let I come ready to in. Take the power out because now we're going to get high. And um, there you go. I think we landed on the. Um, All right, power out. Rear left Let's get back down to wheel first. Miles an hour. And then we hit the uh, right wheel and right then we came down on center line. onto the center wheel. Um, yeah, I was scrambling trying power to stay in that out. center. All right, you got to get that power Made out. Made it. Got to get that power uh, out. But. Not my best landing. Right, I want to say up. this is probably. You're not overcorrected. I think maybe my pedals, full power. fourth landing or so. So I'm not too mad at it. I do make another landing after this at the other airport, our home airport. That's not in this video. Off the ground. It was just way too. Speed. Well, it's in this video, but you I'm don't speeding know, through it. Like that. It okay. was way too dark to show and to just let that footage play. Way too dark. That would be a bad day. That would be. But I get, I did get 0.3 hours of my flight really go faster than during this particular flight, so I am happy about yep. that. Come on. So rotation speed We're following is 60, the syllabus right? pretty hard. Uh, realistically, with my we training. can actually start pulling so back. So eventually, I'm going to have to start doing okay, more night flights. Because by the time flights. we get to 60, that's when our nose will actually be. But I off. may ramp that up I find uh, that that even works before pretty well. Because we're doing a lot of maneuvers. I think I have the maneuvers pretty well. Except we for steep turns going right, to the line, left. Uh, steep turns going to the left is a beast. Power, steep turns going to the right, way easier. Right I normally now. hit my wake when steep turns going Fine. to the right. Steep turns Post going to the left, right. I lose a lot what, of altitude. What you so the I need to checklist. work on that right, some so more. Remember, climb checklist, that we don't back do until pushing feet. that power uh, going to the left. And we also don't need to do it if we're staying in a pattern. I always oh, wind up just yeah, not we'll stay in the pulling pattern, that back pressure. But regardless, it's not done until so I really have to okay, get so used to just pulling that back turning? pressure and nope. holding it. Now, now, mind you, I'm left-handed. Right? So you would think that going to the left would be easier is, uh, for me, um, but it's 1100. not. Right, going so to the we'll right is way okay, easier. So the yep. visual line of reference looks a lot better for me going to the right than it does to the left. But it's something that I'll work on. Other than that, the S turns, the 360 turns around a point, right. 30 degrees of rectangular bank, you know um, with us. maneuver, those are all pretty standard. I can hold altitude pretty well. Um, all right, we are past I can hold a, um, a heading all pretty right, well. 
So those things are coming along. Taking off is, is a lot better. We're gonna head back to Hampton Roads. Getting okay. into these checklists are a lot better. So I'm I'm progressing. I'm a little bit hard on myself when I go back and I watch these videos because I'm pushing myself. I just want to do much right, better, much faster. All right. But I'll get there. I'm quite sure I'll get there. I just have to stick with it. Trust the program. So now, since Hampton Roads is like less than five minutes away, uh, we're not going to worry about um, our climb checklist. So we're going to leave our fuel pump on. Yeah, that trim wheel up there. Verify we have everything else. I always get it wrong. Sort of running through. I'm gonna uh, have to correct. Climb, cruise, descent, and preloading checklist all at the same time. There, making sure it's all good. All right, so but looking still outside, prefer it can over you find Hampton Roads? Right ahead, where those towers are. Uh, See the towers. Right okay. There. Yeah, so as you can see, it's kind of dark, right? All right, so what else Pretty might we be outside. able to use to identify our airport at night? GPS? Uh, Are well, you talking about outside, a visual reference? Yeah, or VFR still. Okay. Um, so what kind of uh, nice visual reference do we have to identify an airport at night? We should have the beacon, the light. Um, yep. But I. So what colors are we looking for? So, I can see that light. Uh, white? white. I light. can see the white light. Green? I could not see the, the light green. Flashing right it here? just looked like it was flashing white to me from green? where we were. They all look white. That to me. green white? was very pale and green? almost looks white. Do you now, see it? As we I kept getting closer and closer, <laughs> they all look the same color. Our, our one o'clock. But yeah, that, 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 that is the airport. That, okay, yeah, I can see it. need to do better with that green. But that it all has to be a darker green from here than that. Okay, that one look white now. Especially with all okay, the light pollution green. around. Yeah, night flying is very difficult. Um, it is extremely hard to see what's what with all the other lights. He said he saw some traffic at the airport. I was looking and I couldn't see any traffic. Um, couldn't identify those lights at all. So that's another thing with flying at night is really being on the lookout, trying to identify other airplanes. You know, this was really my first experience just flying an airplane at night. Cause at this point I have the controls. I'm taking us in, I'm doing the base leg. I'm doing the final leg. I'm doing all of that at this point, heading to the airport and it's late, it's dark. And this is really my first time doing it. So the reason that you see the background go bright like that is because that's what I had to do in post so that you can see anything in the footage. But we don't have any lights inside that cabin. You can see that the um, the compass up there is backlit with red, but nothing else is. And then we cut our iPads down so we wouldn't blind ourselves in there. Eventually, I do bring out my flashlight. I have a handheld flashlight um, that does have a red light, has a green light. I just ordered another light, a headlamp that has red and green, and it also has white. So I'll make sure that I put that in my flight bag so I'll have it next time. He actually has a headlamp. We just didn't use it at that time. Yeah, but overall, this was an experience. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more night flights, getting that experience under my belt. I mean, I'm going to have to do some night flights, 10 landings, I believe. Uh, I spoke with the owner. He says I won't, I guess right now, be doing any solos at night. Cool. Not ready for solos yet anyway, but when it comes to that, I don't know that I'll be doing solos at night. I'm not sure if that's in the plans or not. I'll have to go over the material and see what it is that I need. I always skip over um, taxiway C. Uh, for some reason, when we land, I don't get on those brakes hard enough to make it to taxiway C. And, you know, he was fussing at me about that. Yeah, but that's my video. You know, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Go ahead and like for me, subscribe for me. Leave comments, especially if you're a pilot or wanting to become a pilot. You know, I need some of that feedback. What are your opinions and thoughts? You've gone through the training. 
what do you think of my training? I know my instructors are a lot younger than I am, but they have the experience in flying. This particular instructor, I believe, has about 400 and something hours. Um, the other instructor has about 600 and something hours. So I'm learning from them. You know, I got 12.8 hours under my belt right now. I'm pretty proud of that. Not quite what I need, but I'm getting there. Thanks for tagging along with me on this flight. I appreciate all your support. And I'll see you again for the next flight.